My name is Dr. Wadupetun De Bias. I am an obstetrician gynecologist working in the North York area. Today we will be talking about postmenopausal bleeding. It's defined as cessation of bleeding after 12 consecutive months of not having a period. And the average age of menopause is 51. However, you could go into menopause five years before or up to five years after that. If you want to think about the causes, you need to kind of divide it into two categories. The first category is the gynecological causes. And then the second one, it's non-gynecological. I like to start with the non-gynecological causes. So this could be bleeding from areas that are not related to the genital tract. For example, you could be bleeding around your urethra. You could also be bleeding from your bladder, like a bladder infection, or even from hemorrhoids. The bleeding could also be coming from your bowel, which means your passing blood with your stools. Don't forget, sometimes you could be on medications that can increase your chances of bleeding. For example, if you're on anticoagulants, that could also cause bleeding. The second category will be something related to your gynecological tract. So let's assume you're looking at your body from outward inward. The first area will be your vulva. You could have some conditions called lichensclerosis, which causes a lot of scratching and itching. And unconsciously, you could itch and cause some bleeding. Secondly, you could also have cancer in that area that could present as a boil that has not healed for a while. Moving inwards, you can have bleeding from the vagina. Either you have a polyp there you have cancer or if you've had radiation treatments in the past that could also cause some dryness your cervix is another area where bleeding can happen it could be after intercourse it could be due to a polyp it could also be due, be due to cancer in the uterus fibroids polyps or dryness and by far the most common thing that we need to exclude is cancer of the uterus. The fallopian tubes could also be affected by cancer and so are your ovaries. The commonest reason for having bleeding in the menopause is due to dryness. But the most important thing we need to exclude is cancer of the uterus. So let me be honest with you, postmenopausal bleeding is never normal. As soon as you see any bleeding after 12 months of stopping your period, you need to seek help. You need to contact your family doctor as soon as possible. Your family doctor may decide to start your test or evaluation, or he or she may decide to send you to a gynecologist. But whatever it is, you need to seek help. So your evaluation usually will start with your doctor wanting to know more, which we call history. He wants to know when did the bleeding start? How? Is it fresh? Is it brown? Is there any pain? Any odor? You also want to know the quantity of the bleeding. Furthermore, there are things that your doctor may want to ask you 
that may predispose you to postmenopausal bleeding. They are called risk factors. Do you have a high BMI, which means obesity? How about your age? When did you start your period and when did you finish your period? So that gap is your reproductive period where you've been having a lot of your period. Have you had children or not? If you haven't had a child, that could predispose you to cancer of the uterus. Furthermore, are you on any form of therapy called hormone replacement therapy? This could be as a form of treatment or this could be something that you have picked up over the counter for hot flushes, things that contain soy beans. Soy products are known to have estrogen within them. So having gone through all that history with you, your doctor will then decide to have a thorough checkup on you. Starting from head to toe, invariably you will need to have a vaginal exam. Part of the vaginal exam is passing the speculum. The speculum is that metal thing that is used to expose your vagina and also your cervix. Looking for polyps, looking for abnormal tumors around there. If you've not had your pap smear, your doctor will do it at, this, at that time. Then your doctor will take out the speculum and examine maybe there are any masses of tumors or areas of fibroids. So those things need to be done. It's important that your doctor run some tests. One of the tests would be checking your baseline hemoglobin, especially to assess how much bleeding you've had over the course of the days or the weeks that this started. The speculum exam would enable your doctor to do your pap smear if it has not been done in the last three years. If there are any abnormality, your doctor may want to take a biopsy. But the most important thing during that time will be to do an endometrial biopsy. What is an endometrial biopsy? It's a way of taking a tiny tissue from, your, from the lining of your uterus. We take it with what is called a pipette, which is a light suction, and you don't need too much. That will represent at least over 96% of the content of your uterus, and that will be sent to pathology. It does cause some pain, so I would advise that when you're going for that, you should have some take some painkillers, and maybe perhaps you want to consider somebody to drive you back home, but majority of people are able to tolerate the test. That is why it is done in the office. Furthermore, if you have not had an ultrasound scan, you will be required to do one. The aim of the ultrasound, preferably through the vagina, is called transvaginal approach, is to check the lining of your uterus. Ideally, your, the lining of your uterus should be less than five millimeter. It would also show any tumors within your uterus, around your ovaries or your tubes. You may also be asked to do a test called sonohistogram. This could be used to further assess the lining of your uterus if it's thick to ensure that or to exclude any pollen that is there. So the treatment options for postmenopausal bleeding will be geared towards the reason why you are having it. If it's not gynecological fibroids or bleeding through your rectum, you will be sent to a surgeon. If it's scratch marks caught from lichen sclerosis, your doctor may give you some ointment. But like I said, the commonest reason is dryness. If your ultrasound is normal, and your biopsy is also normal and we confirm because all those things there's nothing else to be concerned about we will assume that it's because of dryness in that case you will be given some options one of the options because when you have dryness is painful intercourse it's important not to avoid intercourse rather to treat it 
So you could use things like vaginal moisturizers, lubrications that could be water-based. Typical example would be KY jelly. You may be offered some local estrogen like Vagifem or Estrin. The advantage of those local estrogen is that they are not absorbed into the entire body, which means the risk of breast cancer is actually minimal. You may also be offered hormone replacement therapy, but that has absorption into the rest of your body. On the other hand, let's assume that you, this comes back and it's cancer of the uterus, then you will be referred to a gynecologist. So just to summarize, uh, postmenopausal bleeding occurs after you have stopped having periods for 12 consecutive months. The commonest reason is atrophy, which means vaginal dryness. But the most important thing that we need to exclude is endometrial cancer. Any bleeding in the menopause is abnormal and you must seek help immediately. Thank you.